Now to go back to our India problem, we have in this situation more or less the problem that faced India. Because in India, the great Brahmanic system of theology was a science based upon a religion. This science resulted in the fantastic structure of a caste system, a system which perhaps had many infallibles that will soon be forgotten, but also had certain points of value that, has to, that have to be considered. The caste system divided humanity into four levels, or general structures. The highest of these was the scholar and the sage. Uh, in the caste system, uh, wealth was not included among the important patterns of career. Below the uh, wise, second caste, was the defender of the wise. And the, the purpose of this defender was to make sure that wisdom itself was never profaned that there was never a time when the highest was not protected and guarded. This might cause some thought today, where if we suddenly came to the realization that militarism was part of a caste in India dedicated entirely to the protection of truth in its abstract form. In other words, it wasn't who won the battle. It was to protect the eternal values of universal law, to protect what we would term the Ten Commandments, the defenders of the faith of righteousness. Then the third uh, caste was what we would call today average people. These were the ones who were the shopkeepers, the workers, the agriculturists, all those who had to do with the maintenance of the living standard of the people, the work people of the world, who were entitled to very high recognition for this. Those who uh, loved to labor, and to whom labor was a religion, to serve others, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to heal the sick. These were the labors of mankind, and these were the labors primarily of the third caste the caste that was concerned with making sure that the universal law was fulfilled in the commonplace, in the marketplace, in the store, in the home, and in the life of the average person who was never going to transcend a level of utilities. And the last caste was that of the outcast, the Sudra. This was the caste not of the people primarily, not originally the people who were born of a lower order. The Sudra was the individual who by nature was common, who by nature had no ideals and no integrities, who lifted about and became the basis of the unemployable, the criminal, and all those who preferred, in a sense, to remain unenlightened to live as slaves to their own ignorance, and by this circumstance ending slaves by others. The Sudra represents therefore a person who regardless of wealth, regardless of station, regardless of opportunity, goes from the cradle to the grave with no interest in the well-being of anyone except himself and his own the individual to whom selfishness is a way of life. Because selfishness is a supreme form of ignorance. The man who does not go to school may be learned. The man who is selfish is always ignorant.